Dr. Fizz on Lagrange's method of undetermined multipliers. So we're taking a slight detour here before we continue with our problem, main problem for this chapter, the statistical analysis of particles in various energy levels and their most probable state. We're going to look at a marvelous technique in solving max min kind of a problem here. But before we do that, let's go back to early calculus where you have a nice problem involving a fence and the fence is restricted to a certain length. The perimeter, 2L plus 2Y, is the amount of fence we have, and it's fixed. It's a, con it's a constraint we have in our problem. We want to enclose the largest area. So if we make X really, really long, then we pay a price here with Y. We don't have much fence for the Y, and that's going to be a narrow strip. So yeah, that's not going to be too good. And I think you probably already know that the square is going to be the best deal here. Make x equal to y and you're going to have it. So the way you we approach this problem, you can set up the area as a function of x and y and the area is x times y. And then what you do is you get rid of the y by substitution using this constraint formula so you get a function of the area function just as a function of x. And then you take dA dx equal to zero to find the extremum. And when you do that, you will get, actually you'll get two extrema. You'll actually get a uh, value zero, x is zero, and the other solution will be the solution that gives you the square. In other words, that x and y are equal and they're each one fourth of the length of the fence you have. Now, if you look at another way of doing this trick, by a trick of uh, Lagrange, you can set up the dA as a function of x and y and take your partials and have it like this. And now you have a problem. See, before we didn't ha have that y because we got rid of it. If you get rid of the y, then you just have this. And since the dx, you can think of that as an arbitrary differential, what hits it is going to be zero. So then you say that the derivative, you know, dA dx is zero, and you solve with the normal calculus way. However, we can still have our cake and eat it and do it this way, but we have a slight problem at the moment because the dx and dy are related. See, if you increase the x amount of fence, then the y is going to decrease you know, because 2x plus 2i is equal to L, capital L, which is your constant. So how do we do this? What's the trick of Lagrange? Here is the trick. What you do is, well, you know dL is going to be 0 because L is a constant. And dA, you want to set that equal to 0, and that's that's fine. You can do that because this is an extra run problem, but you can't do much with it in this form because of the nuisance of the dy being related to the dx. So here's what we do. We do this, kind of like a 0 minus 0 thing. And now when you write the partials out, you have the partial weight respect to x, you know, minus lambda times the partial of L respect to x. And now here's what you do. You say, hey, I'm going to pick lambda. I'm going to pick lambda so I kill the dy one. Because I know dy is dependent on dx. If I increase my horizontal, I have to decrease my vertical and vice versa because I have a limited amount of fence. So I'm going to pick this lambda to kill this. Then I can use my regular uh, calculus uh, ideas before and then state that this is equal to zero with with this. But see, that's a beauty of this uh, because now what you have is you have a beautiful arrangement where there's a symmetry. You have both of these arrangements being zero in this method of Lagrange. Now the price you pay is you have to find what that lambda is floating around, but that's not too bad. When you uh, set the, these derivatives up, and you set those derivatives up very easily using the functions, the areas x times y, and the perimeter, capital L is 2x plus 2y, so just take your derivative, dA, you know, dx here is going to be a y, and dL dx here is going to be a 2, so y is going to be equal to 2 lambda, you'll get, and over here you'll get x is 2 lambda, and say, wow, through the lambda I realize that x must equal y, so I am finished. I have proven that we have a square.